first one how we talk about uh, maybe uh, any of like what Wilton does as far as distribution okay. and things like that. So, okay. Wilton is the uh, official US distributor for uh, Free Bench as a brand, uh, Bandai. Bandai Hobby, which makes the Bandai models, uh, Bandai Thomas Editions, which makes uh, collectible figures, and Bandai Candy Toy, which makes uh, accessories, small little figure toys, and also uh, candy toys. Wilton uh, is also the exclusive distributor for uh, Thomas Editions and Bandai Candy. We are the only ones that are uh, officially allowed to bring in the product into uh, For Bandai Hobby, we are the US one, but there is also a Canadian distributor. So we're not, uh, we don't have all of North America. Okay. Is there any um, products that the fans, the gun, gun pop holders, should be looking forward to right now? Uh, well, the Sazi. That's, that's okay. a given. Obviously, it's a Sazi. Sazi. Master Grade Sazi. Uh, it's a new version of the Sazi uh, as designed, uh, not designed, as a. Based, it's based on Hachime Kotoki's work. Uh, more specifically, in the Domeji project, um, it's a, it's a, there's a movie that plays there uh, about a year ago where there's a new Gundam and a Sasabi yeah. and CG fighting each other. Uh, Kotoki had created a uh, new Gundam and a Sasabi based on the Gundam Evolve short styling. Uh, and that was used to create those CG characters. With uh, the new Gundam Burakaga was released last year as an anniversary kit for the Burakaga uh, line, uh, they all, he also began working on uh, the Sasabi Burakaga, uh, which was also featured in that season show. Uh, the initial drawings for the new Gundam and the Sasabi at the time, they've been uh, modified since then. So using uh, the information from the movie, he uh, went back and he redrew the Sasabi to be what the Burka is going to be as it is now. And so the line art that you see floating around now, that's actually the initial line art that was used to generate the CG model for the movie. But uh, that movie, in turn, was used to help him create new line art for this uh, version of model here. You'll see the new line art in the instruction. Awesome, awesome. And um, when will that be released uh, this year? Is that? When will that be? When will the release? Uh, the Sasuke Verka is uh, being released in, the US. in Japan in December. It will also be released in the US in December as well. For her simultaneous it's a release. Awesome. 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 The awesome. Sasuke Verka is taking up much of the production uh, capabilities of Bandai Hobby because of, uh, they need to be filled with light and men. Wow, okay. What are the best selling picks right now? Uh, specific to the U.S.? Specific to the U.S., yeah. Uh, uh, the, the wing kits. Uh, all the wing kits. Uh, the the master master wing, wing kits. Um, but also, uh, like, Unicorn and... Uh, and uh, the real wing kits are selling. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter what series the real wing kits are from. They're very reasonably priced as well. The, uh, yeah, what's interesting is that uh, for older uh, mech designs from older series, uh, if there is a new version of it, it sells well for a period and then it'll sort of stagnate. But there are certain designs like uh, Strike Rita, Wing Zero Custom, you know, all the big lean yeah. characters that are continuously selling at a steady rate that uh, Bandai Hobby also has to continuously reproduce at a steady rate. Of course. What sells better um, in the U.S.? One one forty four scale or one one hundred? Ah, there is a preference for Master Grade. There's okay. just uh, there's something about the Master Grade line that's uh, very they're very uh, inspiring for people to uh, want to build and assemble because most of the time uh, Master Grades have an uh, internal sculptural structure. The engineering. Yeah, yeah. and they, there's there's, some, there's, a, there's an aspect of it that's unmatched by any other product. Oh out. yeah, that feel about definitely. building the individual components and then. Putting the armor around the internal skeletal structure. A very involved process. How are sales of uh, Valrave in the US? Uh, from, from our perspective, the Valrave sells very well. Uh, the metallic uh, exclusive actually for this show, it's, it kept selling out very, very early in the day, each day. Like, uh, they sold out within 30 minutes this morning. They what, 72 pieces per day? I, I can't. I can't oh, okay. I can't okay, no, no problem, no problem. Is it, would you say it is the best selling of the exclusive kits in the US? Uh, I mean, of the exclusive they sell? I, I, I can't say. Oh, that, okay. Actually. I also don't know because we haven't had them. Oh, okay. 
Is it possible one day um, maybe we'll get an event exclusive, like in the U.S.? Uh, we, we want to. For Dunhua? Yeah, we've been talking yeah. with uh, Bandai Hobby about doing something a little more special, like Thomas Nations does yeah. for their, their products. But uh, Bandai Hobby has, uh, they sort of have different uh, global objectives than Thomas Nations and how they okay. approach the markets. Uh, previously, we had wanted to do uh, Tolkien's 2 uh, oh, okay. in the U.S. Um, there's you guys did bring some over, though. Did no, you guys no. see it at the booth? No, 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 no. not the Tolkien's 2. That's, okay. that's a premium band I Yeah, I know it's, it's, it's an exclusive. Um, we're trying to sort of convince them to let us have it for like an event. But okay. the, the rules of the Bandai you know, premium shop don't allow it unless it's uh, a variant of that exclusive. Uh, which is actually sort of true for Tomshi Nations, the uh, San Diego Comic Con, uh, the Five Pack Saturday. Yeah. Those were all initially web exclusive yeah. arrangers in there that were not released. And the only way we could release them was have some sort of variant of it as opposed to the original web exclusive release. So for like the Tall Geese 2, we were. We were sort of brainstorming how we could bring it over, but we never really could um, convince them that we could. Like, personally, I wanted to just sell the head. That's of course. That's really of course. Of but course. The, the tooling for, because the, the way that it's laid out in the render, that's actually not possible, possible to do. So it would still be possible to do it that way. Yeah. But, um, for, for hobby and female exclusives, um, it was a small, possibility they could be offered as a mental exclusive outside of Japan, but uh, it still needs to be uh, talked about. Still will be uh, okay. There have been um, a lot of reports of uh, Barnes & Noble now carrying a gun plot. Yes, uh, Barnes & Noble actually uh, approached uh, Bluefin uh, back in February uh, during the toy fair. Uh, they were very impressed with the way the uh, all the merchandise was laid out in our in the display cases. The, the display cases that you see at the New York Comic Con saying Comic Con has become sort of a trademark of uh, Rufin's displays. And they saw it and they saw the potential for this type of uh, attraction in their own stores. And so they approached uh, they approached us to inquire more about the products they're carrying. And so initially it was just for the vendor models, but then we also convinced them to take yeah, the stuff, 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 yeah. 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 Besides Barnes & Noble, maybe possible any other venues right now uh, in the future? It will depend. Um, really, the uh, Gendam models, uh, they're, they're not a mass market item. Yeah. They're more of a, a sort of specialty yeah, market item. So it doesn't have a long uh, mass market item. Of course. course. Uh, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't belong to the way. Uh, maybe Toys R Us? Uh, it's actually Toys R Us is selling it online. They, oh, okay. they have it again. Okay. But uh, the, the way the model kit, uh, the Gundam models, the, the, the type of product it is, it doesn't work as a mass retail item because of the fact that the model kits are continuously reproduced. Uh, oh, so okay. ever since like, even like the kits in the 80s, those are still uh, reproduced. So yeah. Still have a chance to order. You basically that need permanent shelf space. Yeah, we need permanent shelf space. That, that yeah. doesn't work for, for yeah. like, Target and uh, Walmart where they have to rotate by season. And so like, it, it's not possible for like, like to say like a high grade to stay on the shelf forever for, for those for those uh, for those stores. It just doesn't work. There's also the fact that uh, you have to have this packaging, there's construction. Oh and it's, yeah. Uh, there's, there's a lot of factors involved that's sort of not not very conducive to making the item affordable for the consumer. Of course. Of course. Does Japan Japan take any input from the U.S. market? Do we, do we sell Do we sell enough in the U.S. that you know? They're they're very well aware that uh, America likes Gundam. That's okay. They're they're extremely aware of that. Okay. Uh, but other, they're not as um, their global strategy isn't the same as Thomas Nations, which is working very closely with with us to get um, real time feedback. They're they're a little more off hand uh, off hands, and they have a different marketing strategy, which I, I can't really talk. Oh, about. of course, of course, understandable. Yeah. Um, how was the turnout for the Gunpla contest this year? That was great. We had uh, about uh, 30 entries. Okay. Uh, they were they ranged from 100 scale to 144 scale. Uh, there was a lot of uh, clean, straight builds that were well painted, but there was a, a few left with uh, some customization and some cool uh, color schemes as well. 
geographically, do you notice any people coming from the same like area, like 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 people who enter in the West Coast and the East Coast, or is there like a specific East Coast people that enter in West Coast? Uh, do you recognize like, like a lot of new faces this year? Uh, there are some new faces. Uh, there's actually new faces every time we have. Okay, them, but there are continuing faces that I uh, do see uh, again and again. Uh, this is the third. 2010. Yeah. Actually, yeah. 2010, 2011, 12, oh, 40. This is the fourth year that it's been at New York Comic Con. Uh, I was, uh, I, uh, I had myself uh, hosted the first one in 2010 uh, when we first started the GBWC. Because before then, it was not, uh, the U.S. wasn't really involved in the competition. Yeah. So that was more like the first introductory year for the U.S. Do you notice a uh, difference between the East Coast, West Coast styles? Between builders, maybe like the gun pop culture? From seeing the entries? That's hard to Well, there is a common theme that's uh, across the, the US in general, which is that uh, US modelers tend to like uh, straight, uh, straight build, so uh, to most mimic the show, most mimic the box, uh, most mimic the display models. Uh, they're not really too interested in uh, branching out and having like, customized law, having modification like you see in the uh, like a hobby demand, like that. Uh, like um, like it's uh, uh, the Singapore, Hong Kong, Malaysia, yeah. Philippines. They have lots of kits that are extremely customized, like up the wazoo, where yeah. to the point where some of them don't even resemble the original kit base that it's uh, that was used. But uh, here in the U.S., there's a lot of preference for it, as it was in the show, as it was in the bo on the box art, as it is in the, um, as a finished model, yeah. not as a I own personal. Oh, okay, of course. Of course. What kind of steps have you been taking to spread gun pop culture in the US? So there is the uh, there is the model contest, and we also uh, through our retailers they have uh, incentives to uh, offer the products to U.S. consumers. Uh, for instance, there's part replacement policies that these retailers have. Uh, if you purchase from them, you're entitled to uh, the part replacement policy, which is only for uh, U.S. stores. If for some reason there's a defect, there's a uh, broken parts, uh, you can request for your model or one time you can request for replacement parts free of charge. Uh, they would only have to pay for shipping. And it's, uh, we request it through Japan, and Japan sends it to the U.S. Oh, okay. Wow, well, that's, that's really good. Where would you like um, to see the Gunpla World, World Cup go in the U.S.? Your personal goal? Uh, I'd like since, to you're, since you're obviously I, the head guy of it. I would like to see uh, uh, more, well, assuming uh, Gunpla will ever get large enough uh, to reach more spectacle than it is as it is now, uh, I'd like to have uh, sort of more of a flashier uh, set up for the displays uh, because in like Singapore, uh, Malaysia, Philippines, they have like huge. It's yeah. huge. They have like whole like floor, like a whole floor dedicated to the contest, and there's uh, there's lots of staff involved. There's like workshops for uh, for model kits uh, and uh, for teaching children and people who are new to the hobby. I'd like eventually to see that in the U.S. A, a big thing, where it's a big thing. That would be your ultimate goal. You just want yeah, yeah. one day. To have that, uh, a GBWC was like, yes, this is a, it's, that, it's that Gundam contest. Yeah. Let's go to it, guys. Let's go. <laughs> Has the GBWC grown a lot in the past four years in the U.S.? Yeah, yeah ever since we first started in 2010, the number of entries has continuously increased for each each event. Um, this year we had uh, there are some people who couldn't make. It. I know who could not make it to the show, so we had a little bit less entries this year than last year, but. Uh, they were still about as uh, the, the satisfactory level of the entries was still there. Have you noticed the quality level of the entries getting better as the years go by? Uh, Maybe because you know they've been building more yes, and more yes. into it. Yes, there was actually. I think, actually, I was I was made aware after the, uh, the contest was over that the, the winner uh, was actually someone who was entering continuously every year. Uh, this is the first time he won something oh, at okay. at, uh, for the GBWC in New York, and he actually won best of the show. So he's been he's actually he's obviously. <laughs> Is there any um, other uh, 
like con conventions besides here? Obviously, you, you have an Otakon, um, yeah, so AX. Anime, anime Expo, uh, Seattle, uh, Sakura-Con, uh, Dallas Geek Con, uh, Chicago is uh, Anime Central, and yeah, Otakon in uh, Maryland, and uh, here in New York. Oh, okay. Also, uh, there used to be one in Fanime, but uh, we've been having some uh, problems there, and so we weren't able to have the, sh uh, the contest there for the past few years, unfortunately. Due to just sort of how anime is, it's more of a, a fan anime yeah, convention yeah, yeah, as opposed to an industry. It's not the industry run. Yeah, so like, shows like this, yeah. Comic-Con yeah. Anime Expo, are a big industry. But, uh, they want big names there, and so the, the setups for their uh, convention hall actually allow stuff like uh, promotional things to go on within like the viewers hall like this. Can you go into a little bit more detail about the relationship of um, Bluefin and the Bondi, like the, how the distribution works and stuff like that, and uh, how you're going on uh, with, like, um, as opposed to how you said with the Kamash Nation before, how it's different? Yeah, it's uh, it's not, right now with Kanda Hub, it's not as, uh, as hands-on as Kamash Nation's. Kamash okay. Nation's is, is, uh, is very, uh, I can't remember, they're, they're very, they, they're, they, they really do want to know what's going to do well in the U.S. And they, they have specific items that are made specifically within the U.S. by like the Western franchises uh, from uh, SH Monster Arts, the uh, Power Ranger figures, which are really, really based on U.S. demand. Like, I can't stress that enough for like, why all the remaining Rangers, that's all pretty much been driven by U.S. demand. Uh, but for, for Bandai Hobby, it's uh, because Bandai Hobby is more closely aligned with Sunrise for like, the yeah. franchise. So their their strategy is a little more it's more different. Uh, we haven't quite been on such a close knit relationship as with well. other They have their own uh, marketing plans for because they have they consider uh, it seems like they consider the, the global market as a sort of a uh, uh, as one entity. Like oh, okay. outside Japan is considered global market, but for Tamashii Nations, like, they're specifically right. Oh, China has this, uh, oh, Korea yeah. has this, uh, this country has this. But for, for uh, Bandai Hobby, uh, when we talk about specific, specific things, they're, they refer to the global market in general, so uh, it's a little different. For um, the current airing Gundam series, you notice that perhaps when, when they are currently airing, that the kits do sell better for those? Particular kits like for age and you know obviously got their unicorn sell. I probably just sell them based on the books, but uh, well, here's the thing. Uh, not, we, we know that uh, Gundam fans are buying the Gundam markets, but yeah. there's also uh, we do notice there's a, a large number of people who haven't seen the Gundam series but think yeah, the model kit is cool and they buy it because it looks cool. The, like the, the red frame uh, masturbate perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it does extremely well and it's from a manga that's out of print. Yeah. That localization from Tokyo Bomb is out of print now. So none of these people have read that manga and there's, they haven't seen the source material but they're still buying it and red frame is one of the most popular model kits. Uh, it, it sells consistently well and it's selling itself basically. Uh, that's that's something else um, with Bandai Hobby, the, their model kits, uh, even though it's you know been a franchise and all, but a lot of their, their models they sell themselves. Like it doesn't need any anything else. Like the Astray Red Frame, as far as most people are concerned, they don't know anything about Gundam C, Gundam C Astray, they don't know anything about it, but they're still buying it because it looks cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is there anything you'd like to share with the uh, fans? You know, the, our viewers and our, our readers, you know, possible future Gunpla builders. Any uh, message you'd like to give them? <laughs> well, uh, there is, but uh, it sounds kind of crass oh, to say it's okay. but, like, but uh, to, uh, to be honest, um, the more you purchase from U.S. retailers, the more clout we have in getting Bandai Hobby to uh, sort of negotiating uh, certain things like event exclusives, like you guys want a tall piece US, too, right? A, a US like, you want you want the opportunity to buy like course. U.S. exclusives, right? Uh, and have them available like outside of Japan shop, right? Well, we sort of need uh, people to buy from U.S. retailers, so those sales are accounted for as U.S. sales, and so it does. Those numbers help when we're we're having discussions with Bandai over uh, the marketability of items and how the demand is. Otherwise, if you buy it from if you're importing it from outside the U.S. yourself, we don't have the we don't have those numbers. It's not contributing. Support the U.S. guys. 
Support Buy the US. American. <laughs> Buy American. Our thanks, Xavier, for everything. Thank you.